In this video, we're going to be looking at dihedral groups in terms of how to represent their elements in terms of represent in terms of permutation notation. Uh, let's first of all remember that a dihedral group is nothing more than the symmetries of a regular ingon. And we already know that uh, the dihedral group is made up of in rotations and in reflections or flips. Uh, the fancy name, the, the correct name is reflections, but flip is a whole lot easier to write, and so I'm going to call them flips. Uh, the basic rotation is going to be uh, 360 degrees divided by n in the counterclockwise direction. And uh, that's going to be something that may be a little bit different than what we looked at the first time we did with, dealt with uh, dihedral groups. But this is going to be our standard uh, way of looking at that base rotation at this point. So here's an ingon over here. And if I let R be the base rotation, then what I want to notice is that one is going to be shoved this away, and two is going to come there, and three will land here, and four will land here, five will land there. N, of course, gets shoved to here, and this one would be shoved to n minus 1. Now the question is, how are we going to get a permutation out of this? Well, we can start by thinking in terms of two-row notation. And I'm going to have a pretty big set of notation because there's a, a lot of things that I simply want to chase. Now I want to think about the stuff inside that I've written as moving labels. They're where the labels got sent to, and they're kind of, think of it as, as if we had the labels on something and we moved this, that's where things go. But we also have, in some sense, these outside labels that are going to remain fixed. And we can think of these as the slots, and they're fixed slots. And so it makes some sense to be thinking about vertex 1 went into the nth slot. So we're sending 1 to n. And vertex 2 went to the first slot. So we sent 2 to 1. And 3 landed in the second slot. So we sent vertex 3 to 2. Four to, vertex 4 landed in the third slot. So we sent 4 to 3. Vertex 5 landed in the fourth slot, so we sent 5 to 4. Uh, n minus 1 landed in the n minus 2 slot, and n landed in the n minus 1 slot. It shouldn't come as a surprise that n minus 2 landed in the n minus 3 slot. So that's how we're going to write the two row notation. Well, we also know how to convert two row notation into uh, disjoint cycle notation, and this is actually going to be a cycle. One is going to go to n, and then n is going to go to n minus 1, and n minus 1 is going to go to n minus 2, and n minus 2 is going to go to n minus 3, and this is going to keep on going until 6 goes to 5, and 5 goes to 4, and 4 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 2, and 2 goes back to 1. So the whole cycle then can be written as 1 goes to n, goes to n minus 1, goes to n minus 2, until we get down to 3, down to 2, and we wind up going back to 1. Uh, so that's basically the, 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 the first fundamental rotation. The other rotations are just powers of this rotation. 
so we can look at that rotation composed with itself two times, three times, four times, five times, and so on. In general, r to the k can be thought of as we are rotating k steps in the counterclockwise notation. And it's important to realize that there's one thing that we can say about r to the k. And we can pick this pattern up uh, this way. r sends 2 to 1, because 2 got sent to 1 by r. r squared is going to send 3 to 1. Because if I start here and I do 1r, I land at 2. And if I do a second r, I'm going to land at 3. Well, r cubed, if I start at 4 and do r cubed, the first r sends 4 to 3. The second r sends 4 to 2. And then we wind up with the third r going all the way to 1. If I look at r to the fourth, and start at 5, well, 5 would be over here. First r, second r, third r, fourth r. r to the fourth of 5 is going to be 1. Well, there's a pattern here. It turns out that r to the k, since k plus 1, to 1. We can also state this as r to the k minus 1 of k is going to be equal to 1. And this basic fact is actually going to have some importance in the um, next video. Well, now it's time to look at our flips. There are two kinds of flips when n is even. And it turns out there's only one kind of flip when n is odd. Uh, so there are two kinds of flips when n is even. And I want to look at the first kind in this slide. And the first kind is going to fix one vertex. We're going to start by fixing one. And then it starts flipping everything else. Now the question, of course, is the line of symmetry, what does it land at at the other end? Well, let's just look at some really basic even n-gons. I want to start with a hexagon because they're pretty easy to draw. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if I want to fix 1, it turns out that I have to fix 4. That's my line of symmetry. And, two and 6 will swap and 3 and 5 will swap. So this particular flip would be 2 goes to 6 and 3 goes to 5. Now, 6 is equal to my 2k, so... 3 is equal to k, and that vertex that gets fixed with 1 turns out to be k plus 1. Well, if I look at an 8-gon, which would look like a stop sign, stop signs are octagons. They actually are nice regular octagons. So here's my stop sign. Eight's the 2k, so 4 is k, and the vertex that is opposite that 1 just happens to be k plus 1 again. And if I'm using this line of symmetry, the flip would be 2 goes to 8, 3 goes to 7, and 4 goes to 6. Well, it turns out that this works out for any even uh, n-gon. If I go opposite of 1, the thing that I pick up on is going to be a vertex. And that vertex is not going to be just any old vertex. 
that vertex is going to be k plus 1. And over here on this side of k plus 1 is vertex k. And over here on this side of vertex k plus 1 is vertex k plus 2. And once I have this picture, I can see that the flip that fixes 1 is going, and I'm just going to call him F. The uh, book's name for him is going to be S. But this flip is 2 goes to N, 3 goes to N minus 1, 4 will go to N minus 2, and we keep going until we get K goes to K plus 2. And if we're interested in the parity of this flip, we would need to count these transpositions. And so let's count them. What I want to notice is that the first transposition has a 2 sitting there in the first coordinate. And the second one has a 3. And the third one has a 4. So when we get up to here, this must be the k minus 1 transposition. So all flips that fix, and actually they're going to fix two vertices, uh, have parity equal to the parity of k minus 1 when the n for the dihedral group is 2k. Now, there's a different kind of flip as well for permutations that happen, for, for dihedral groups that happen to have n is equal to 2k. And um, I want to look at them, and we're going to pick up that on the next slide. Again, what I want to do is start with my hexagon picture. And I'm going to also start with my octagon picture. And we will have one, two, three, four, five, six over here. That's 2k. 3 is equal to k. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is equal to my 2k over here. 4 is equal to the k. Now, what I want to notice over here is that. I can actually draw a line of symmetry that bisects the edge 1, 2. So the second type of flip bisects the edge 1, 2. But if it bisects the edge 1, 2, opposite that edge is another edge. So it also bisects the edge. In this case, uh, well, this will be k plus 1, and that's k plus 2. And this is k plus 1, and this is k plus 2. So it's also going to bisect the edge k plus 1, k plus 2. And over here, if I look at this midpoint, and I look at this midpoint, and I think about that as my line of symmetry, I'm going to notice that uh, any symmetry when n is equal to 2k if the line of symmetry bisects 1, 2, it also bisects, let's uh, actually use slightly, if it bisects the edge 1, 2, then it's also going to bisect the edge k 
plus 1, k plus 2. Now, it's also important to note that over here, if I look for other kinds of symmetries, if they are bisecting one edge, they're going to bisect uh, a pair of edges. And we're actually going to wind up getting n of, well, actually, it's n minus 1, I'm sorry, n divided by 2 of these kinds of flips. And if we back up to the other slide for just a minute, it's important to realize that if we look at the ones that are over lines of symmetry that join pairs of vertices, there are going to be n over 2 of these flips as well. So now what I want to do is I want to think in terms of, I'm going to call this particular flip S hat. S hat is this flip up here. Um, so this is the S hat flip line. And what is S hat going to do? Well, it's going to flip these two guys, not those two guys. Just wait for that to die off for a minute. It's going to flip these two guys. And it's going to flip these two guys. And it's going to flip these two guys. And we're going to keep going. And um, this one is going to actually flip with five. And we're going to get down to these two guys. So what I want to do is I want to kind of write an edge here that is ending with uh, five. And I'm going to actually write these flips. 1 and 2 are going to change places, 3 and n are going to change places, 4 and n minus 1 are going to change places, 5 and n minus 2 are going to change places, and finally k plus 2 and k are going to change, not k plus 2, I'm not going to worry about k k plus 1 and k plus 2 are going to change places. Let's do some erasing there. That was more than I wanted, but uh, we will get back to what we had. This is k plus 1, and our line of symmetry continues on down here. And so k plus 2 and k plus 1 switch. And so our s hat looks like 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to n and n goes to 3, minus 1 and n minus 1 goes to 4, 5 will go to n minus 2, and this is going to keep going until we get to k plus 1 and k plus 2 swap places. Now if we're interested in the parity of this kind of a flip, the parity of this kind of a flip, um, what I want to notice is that uh, the, these things are in increasing order all the way up from 3, 4, 5, all the way up to k plus 1. And uh, we're going to use this as a 2. So we can think in terms of 1, 2, 3, 4. This would be our k transposition. So this here is going to be the kth transposition. And so it's important to realize that the parity of these guys is the parity of k. Now again, if we go back a page, the flips that had that fixed vertices have parity equal to the parity of k minus 1, the flips that don't fix anything have parity equal to k, the parity of k. So I kind of want to get that written down as a fact. So it's important to realize that when d, when, when n 
is equal to two it to two k. The flips that fix fair that fix a pair of vertices have parity equal to the parity of k minus one. The flips that fix no vertices have parity equal to the parity of k. So half the flips are going to be even, and half the flips are going to be odd, because k and k minus 1 have opposite parity. So in D2K, half the flips are even, and half are odd. Well, now let's look at what happens to the flips when I've got a dihedral group where the n-gon happens to be odd. So in this particular n-gon, we've got an odd number of vertices. And again, I want to start by looking at some basic examples. Here is a pentagon. And let's make that three a little bit clearer. And let's also do a heptagon. That's a seven-sided pentagon. Well, it's a seven-sided ingon. Now, what I want to notice is that if I'm starting here at 1, so I'm starting here at 1, and I'm thinking about what's halfway around. Halfway around is now the middle of the opposite side. And if I'm on this 7 gone, halfway around is the middle of this opposite side. You can tell that that's the opposite side because there's one side, there's one side, here's a second side on both things, here's a third side, third side. So this is the fourth side, and we're hacking it, and we're chopping it in half. Now here, 5 is 2k plus 1, and so k is equal to the 2, and that 3 is k plus 1, and that 4 is k plus that 4 is k plus 2. Over here, uh, the 7 is 2k plus 1. So that means 3 is equal to the k. And my opposite side is still between k plus 1 and k plus 2. And that fact generalizes. If we have an odd ingon and we start with 1, the opposite side is always going to be trapped between vertex k plus 1 and vertex k plus 2. Now, what I want to notice is that um, all of the flips are going to behave similarly. If I'm over here and I start at 2, the thing that is opposite 2 is the side between 4 and 5. If I start at 3, the thing that's opposite 3 is a side. And if I start at 4, the thing that's opposite of side, opposite 4 is a side. And if I start at 5, the thing that is opposite 5 is a side. Over in our 7 con, the same thing that happens. The thing that is opposite 2 is the side between 5 and 6. The thing that's opposite 3 is the side between 6 and 7. The thing that's opposite 4 is the side between 7 and 1. And the thing that's opposite 5 is the side between 1 and 2. 
And if I come back and just darken that red in here, because I don't want to lose sight of them, what I want to notice is that if n is equal to 2k plus 1, all flips fix one vertex. And the line of symmetry joins the fixed vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So I'm going to call this particular flip here, the author of our book does not have a special name for it, but I'm going to call this flip S hat. And if I want to look at S hat, I can easily see that S hat is going to flip these two guys, these two guys, these two guys, and eventually these two guys. And so S hat's going to have one goes to, not one, two goes to N, two and N are going to swap, three and N minus one are going to swap, And uh, 4 and n minus 2 are going to swap. And this is just going to keep going until we get down to k plus 1 and k plus 2 swap. And if I want to think about this, I can count the number of transpositions if I'm interested in the parity of s hat, uh, I can count the transpositions. Again, what I want to notice is that um, my counting number is going to be one off the first coordinate of these uh, transpositions. That's the first one, the second one, the third one, and there should be a dot, dot, dot here. So let me correct my notation ever so slightly. We keep going until we get up to k plus 1, goes to k plus 2. That's also sloppy. And so going back to counting, we have 1, we have 1, 2, 3. This one is going to be the kth transposition. So this will be the kth transposition transposition in our product of transpositions. So the parity of this s hat is going to still be the parity of k. And what I want to do is I want to compare this to the um, previous slides with the n is even case. Uh, and what I want to notice is that um, the parity of the f one that fixes two notations, uh, two vertices over here was k minus one, and um, the parity of the one that fixes none was k, and then over here, this has been behaving in some sense more like the ones that fix no vertices for the in case. Well, what we've now got is we have ways of representing the permutations in a dihedral group uh, as permutations, but I also want to kind of lead towards another sort of thing, which is we know how we, we've, we've talked about in the past how we can generate the dihedral group with just one rotation and a flip. And that's going to be the next recording.